then you see auditors are very important for any company because the investors will look at the audit report to see how the company is doing so auditors are certifying that everything is okay now who are the auditors of this adani company These are young people of 22, 23, 24 years old. They have just set up a company. Now, Adani's are operating in a huge setup. You know, they are into airports, into ports, into roads, into coal, into you know, importation and so on. So, can such a young firm actually audit them? They cannot. I mean, think about Satyam. <coughs> you, you remember Satyam's case? In 2009, uh, Satyam failed, and Raju of Satyam himself came out and gave a report in the stock market huh, that he had been manipulating the accounts. If you remember, and 6,000 crores of fixed deposits were supposed to be fake. How can it be possible? You know, an auditor is not supposed to miss even one paisa. Forget 6,000 crores. <coughs> it shows that very often there is a nexus between the auditor and the business. And when I wrote my book on the black economy in 1999, I talked to many auditors, and they said, "Look, the businessman is paying me, so I will sign whatever he says." So very often, auditors will sign on the fake accounts. So all the manipulations that are going on, which auditors are supposed to check, this young firm would not check. and that then enables them to continue to operate the way they are operating <coughs> so that's another question that i think needs to be asked so the questions are high valuation the high risk of the company and going on expanding by getting capital from abroad using shell companies and so on and so forth so the question is what impact will this have on the indian economy because that's the big question some people say that they have lot of assets they have the airport they have the coal mines they have the you know ports etc so what's the problem the problem is valuation what is the value of those assets if the valuation is exceeding really high then it can even fall tomorrow and then the economy will be uh, in problem so the first problem that is happening is that the investment climate in the indian economy deteriorates because it's now it has been known that these companies which are held by individual business houses they do all kinds of manipulation they do cronyism and they use cronyism to actually expand but that means that india has very lax regulation and therefore the chances of losing funds is quite high and therefore the business climate deteriorates now the business climate in india was already quite poor because capacity utilization has been very low and that's why the investment rate in the indian economy which had peaked in 2012 13 at 36.5% had come down to 30 to 32% and when investment rate comes down then the rate of growth also comes down so our problem is that our rate of growth had been dropping even before the pandemic in official figures in 2017 18 quarter 4 the rate of growth was set to be 8% and then in quarter 4 of 2019 20 just before the pandemic it had dropped to 3.1% so why was that happening because the business environment was deteriorating and mind you this is official figure i have shown in so many of my articles that our current rate of growth is not 6% 7% but minus 1% this 6% 7% is the rate of growth of the official organized sector this does not include the data for the unorganized sector because the unorganized sector is measured once in 5 years last time it was measured was in 2015 and after that we have not measured it because the pandemic came so unorganized sector is declining and we have evidence of that all around look at e-commerce e-commerce is rising at 30 40% okay and the neighborhood store is declining because demand is shifted from uh, the neighborhood store to e-commerce so like even in my family 
Before the pandemic came, we did not use e-commerce at all. Never ordered anything from e-commerce. But when the pandemic came, we started ordering. And now 90% comes from e-commerce. Only 10% we are buying from the neighborhood stores. So this rise of e-commerce has meant the trade demand is shifted towards the organized sector away from the unorganized sector. Okay. Similarly, you have 